Thank you, John. Thank you to my colleagues. Um, I, I, I think Senator Thune has, has pegged it when he says that uh, when the President uses the theme, the words that the Republicans have been using for, for years now, that we should have an all of the above policy. Um, either he's finally getting it, or maybe it is. This is the greatest form of flattery here. I don't think he's getting it, though, because the actions are not matching the words. And, and uh, both Senator Thune and Senator Cornyn have, have kind of outlined uh, some of those. The President also went on to say that the Republican plan is, is pretty simple. It's, it's drill, drill, drill. And I have stated uh, on the floor just this week and have, have made a, a concerted point of saying that, well, drilling is not the whole answer. It is clearly a part of the solution here when it comes to accessing our own energy resources within this country. So it might not be drill, drill, drill as the only solution, but drilling is a huge part of how we need to access our domestic energy resources, whether it be oil, whether it be natural gas through the fracking, fracking process, whether it's how we access our coal reserves, we have the resources we need to access them. So he has stated that under his administration that we are seeing more increased production than at any other time. It's important to kind of peel back the onion here, though, and see where we're seeing the production. It is on state lands. It is on private lands. It, when you look at the activity on federal lands, we have seen a net decrease, an 11 percent decrease in production on federal lands when it comes to oil and a 14 percent decrease on federal lands when it comes to our natural gas. So the, the words are not matching the actions that are coming out of this administration. You've all heard the stories about what Alaska holds in terms of our oil resources, in terms of our natural gas resources. But the fact of the matter is, is there is nothing that is being produced on our federal lands right now. ANWR has a potential of 10.6 billion barrels of oil, and that's the mean estimate right now. Offshore, 26 billion barrels of oil is what is estimated. Within our NPRA, the National Petroleum Reserve, another area of, 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 of potential that we have not been able to formally access because we've been denied a permit to get a bridge across a river by this administration. We've been finally moved that forward. We'd like to see some activity there. USGS just came out this past week with a new estimate for the oil and, and shale gas that is available up north, another 2 billion barrels of, of shale oil. So the potential is there, but the fact of the matter is, is we haven't been able to access it. So when you, when you talk about what's happening with the price of, of gas today, I'm not suggesting that if we were to open up Anwar tomorrow, we're going to see the price at the pumps drop commensurately. But if we don't take the first step, if we don't try to do more as a country on our own, then we will never get there. And I hate to say we got to go back in time, but in 1995, this Congress, this Senate passed legislation that opened up ANWR. It was vetoed by Clinton. That was in 1995. If that, if ANWR had been advanced at that point in time, we would have oil flowing through our half-empty pipeline right now. Senator Schumer has asked the Saudis, cup in hand, give us two million more barrels a day. We could be providing that through the Trans-Alaska Pipeline today had not that legislation be vetoed. So if we don't start now accessing our own resources, we're never going to get to the finish line.